Hi, this is Sheer Rubinoff here at RSA 2023. I'm here with Martin from Trellix. Martin, please introduce yourself to our audience. Tell them who you are and what you do. Hi, I'm Martin Holstey with Trellix. I'm the Senior Director for Emerging Technology. Wonderful to be here with you today. Thank you for having me. So Martin, AI like ChatGPT and BARD are a hot topic right now. Can they be used for good or bad? Absolutely. It's an arms race right now. Uh, things like ChatGPT and AI in general uh, can be used by anybody, really. And so that means that the good guys need to use it for as much defense as they can get from it, knowing that the bad guys are going to be using it every way they can to accomplish their goals, whether they're state actors or crimeware gangs. Uh, everyone's going to be using it, so it's really an arms race right now. So can you give an example about that? I think our audience would like to hear some use cases or just even a story that comes to mind. Sure. Well, starting with the bad guys, so some of the most obvious things, uh, it's so much easier to write a targeted spear phishing email when you can have ChatGPT write it for you. And if we think about what phishing is, they're trying to get you to click on a link that you shouldn't click on. They can also use things like ChatGPT to really uh, fast uh, create web pages very fast. And when they create those web pages, they're going to look exactly the way that they should. So they're much more convincing to uh, a would-be victim looking at that uh, phishing page. So that's the, the biggest thing we see immediately, just most obviously, uh, coming out of ChatGPT. I know ChatGPT can also understand and learn how a person writes, how they think in terms of what their output is. How can you protect against that when they get to know somebody and their output is very similar, if not identical, to what they're really doing? So at the end of the day, what we're really talking about here are behaviors. And the good news is that good guys behavior is very different than a bad guy's behavior. So even if they can impersonate to authenticate or do, you know, get in the front door that way, that doesn't mean that they're going to be able to do anything they want as long as the defenders can notice what is actually happening. So if it's unusual to steal a ton of money from a bank account, then hopefully you're going to be able to notice that part of it, even if they have the same words and language coming in the front door. Well, that makes a lot of sense, certainly. How do DLP solutions help protect sensitive data? I know we hear a lot about DLP in general, and we talk about it all around data, but how does it help protect it? So my wife is an HR director, and she writes position descriptions uh, for a big part of her job. And one day I was telling her, hey, you can use ChatGPT to help out. It can write a lot of that for you, and then you can make tweaks. She said, okay, I'll try that out. And the next day she said, wow, that worked really well. It saved me a ton of time. But now I want to tell other staff to use this as well, but I'm worried about it because they could easily paste in the wrong thing into ChatGPT. And it was this moment where I'm like, oh, <laughs> I can help you with that. Uh, so using things like DLP will prevent you from accidentally doing simple things like copying and pasting email addresses, social security numbers, medical information into any website, including ChatGPT. So this gives you a way to say, go, out, go safely use this tool, be more productive. And it doesn't matter who you are or what your job is, for the most part, if you are using a computer, you're probably going to want to use something like ChatGPT. And this allows you to do it safely using DLP to make sure you're not pasting in the wrong stuff. Well, that's a very important element because, as we know, we're moving at warp speed. Everybody's multitasking. We have many browser windows open whether or many devices that we're using all at once. So I think this is a no-brainer. So I'd like to ask you another thing. Do you have any predictions or cybersecurity business tips that you'd like to share with our audience today? Yeah, so there's a, a big thing coming up. I mentioned the arms race earlier. Defenders need to be much better at this right now. And one of the things that we've seen historically is that when you know an event comes through, an alert comes through, we say, is this a good event? or a bad event, and we look at it and we say, oh, this was critical, we need to do something right away. Well, over time, we've noticed that we start to ignore things. And so what we're seeing now is that you can start to look at events, neither as good or bad, but simply events, and use the power of AI and things like GPT to make better evaluations overall for a lot of different events put together to tell the complete story and to look at it more from the, the story aspect versus a single point in time. So using AI to go beyond just a simple alerting uh, my prediction is that you're not going to have alerts that have a critical rating on them anymore because the, at that moment in time, we don't know if it's critical. You have to come back and do you know, the, the real automated investigation to figure that out. Wow, well, thank you for that useful hint, and I think that's a very interesting prediction that I think actually makes sense to all viewers, so thank you for that. It's been wonderful speaking with you today, and I look forward to engaging more with Trellix. Thank you. It's been great. Thank you.